Hey guys, thanks for dropping in. Uh, with this video, I want to try something a little bit different. Um, usually with my videos, I, I talk about the art and the process while I'm making them. But for this one, since I'm theming it off of um, a, a new game coming out, Ghost of Yotai, um, there's a little bit of controversy and stuff around it. And I, was, I mean, all that's out is a trailer. But I think in this video, as I make the painting, and I'll talk a little bit about the painting process or things in it, but I think I also want to talk about the subject matter. I mean, a lot of my art of all, you know, involves uh, pop culture related themes and, and stuff that I enjoy, whether it's games, movies, that sort of content. I do comic cons, horror conventions. And, you know, I can only talk about how, how many different ways I make a, a bush or, or a rock or a tree or something in a painting. So I figure in some of my videos, uh, if it's themed off of something in particular, that I'll talk a little bit about the subject matter, you know, my thoughts about it, what I like, don't like, or just any of the latest news about it, you know, just to make it a little more interesting. So with that said, I'm going to dive right into this one. All right, guys, here we are jumping right into this. Um, I said I was going to do something a little bit different and talk a bit about the subject matter as well as the process. Um, as you can see here, I'm just I'm throwing down on paper. This one's not going to be on canvas. My canvases are kind of limited right now, and um, everything I'm putting on canvas is for an upcoming show I'm doing, the Spooky Empire Horror Con here in Orlando. Uh, it's coming up on November 1st. So if you're in the area or coming to the area and you want to check that out, highly recommend it. It's always a blast. Um, but uh, yeah, so the game, uh, I mean, I'm going to sit here and put this uh, this mountain right in the middle of it. Uh, the game takes place in um, old feudal Japan and there's Mount Yotai featured in it, which is like this big cone-shaped, probably a dormant volcano, um, given the, the shape of the, the mountain. It's just this like lone, pointed peak. I haven't bothered to look it up, but it's just by the look of it, geographically, it's probably a volcano. But um, it's pretty much covered in trees, and then it has this like amazing, this like wonderful snow-capped peak to the top of it. So as you can see here, I'm using some gray. I'm going to put down some gray first, and I'm tackling it a lot like you would see Bob Ross do it, where he just use a palette knife and, you know, paint in his, uh, his snow-capped peaks on his mountains using that same process but I'm going with this light gray color first and then I'm gonna come back over the top of it with some white so it helps add some like shadow and like dimension to you know to this mountain peak um, yeah and I haven't done anything like this in a while so I was really happy with kind of how it turned out I was kind of winging it and it's definitely something I'd like to play around with more and I actually take the same approach to something a little bit later on in the painting but with that said, yeah, the game, I mean, I'm excited for it. Um, it looks like it continues the visual look of the first one, Ghost of Tsushima, which was a fantastic game. I mean, I love anything that takes place in feudal Japan where you got samurais and ninjas. I mean, I grew up with all that stuff. And um, But even more to that point with the first game, though, is like visually it was amazing. Just you walk into these areas. Um, it's, you know, open worlds. So you're running through the landscape. But the, the way they modeled the landscape and the colors and things they used for like these wonderful fields of, you know, flowers or you go into the forest and the trees are just, you know, I guess like the change in the season. You have these like amazing reds and yellows throughout the leaves and, you know, there's like dust motes and leaves floating through the air. It's just like this incredible scenery to run through and just really like as an artist, like inspiring um, what's cool is you can take screenshots and stuff with games now, and a lot of them have like a photo mode where you can pause it and sort of pan a camera around within a scene and take photos. And I do that a lot in my games when I play, um, depending on the game, to kind of like capture sceneries and stuff from within the game to use for reference material later for paintings, you know, I, I want to make, or at least ideas. So I have a lot of fun with that. So games that have a, a great visual aspect to them are like just a big win for me. And what I've noticed with the trailer with Ghost of Yotai is that um, that kind of visual consistency seems to have continued over to the, the sequel. But the sequel's getting a little bit of controversy right now. And it's, um, and I don't know, I mean, I can't really say rightly so, but it's, it, it it sort of bugs me a little bit as a fan of the first game i was expecting a sequel that would have the main character from that game continuing on because he was a fantastic character but this one's getting getting some heat because it not only takes place like three four hundred years into the future which you know which is okay it's still that same sort of feudal japan you know setting but now you have like you know firearms are now in the picture but uh they made the switch to a female protagonist and 
that's got a lot of people on edge. Not that you know gamers overall have an issue with female protagonists, despite what people might say. Uh, you know, gamers love playing female protagonists as much as anybody. But the problem is, is the the voice actress that does the work for the character. She did like the voice acting and the um, and the motion capture. Turns out she's a rather hardcore. What they would say is like a woke activist. She's like queer, non-binary, etc. Et I mean, it's hey, you know, I'm an artist. Hey, you live your life how you want to live your life, kind of thing. But there is like a very strong push for all this like sort of DEI, um, was it identity politics showing up in media, especially games and movies and stuff. I mean, we've all seen it, and I mean, I'm of a time when just films were great, like we had diversity and everything in them without it being pushed so hard to the forefront. But in this regard, a lot of people are worried that her her politics, her personal politics and things are going to be pushed into the game because of how hardcore of an activist she is on social media. And she's got like a very kind of anti, like uh, aggressive stance towards men and stuff in general. And it's just anybody with like a strong sort of activist kind of presence like that it just doesn't turn out well for for the game that's part of what i worry about is like the the impression that's going to leave on the game and how it's going to impact sales and um you know any controversies and stuff that stir up now you know just look at like rachel zegler and the the snow white movie i mean good luck making your money back on that one disney as you can see here with this tree real quick uh, again same approach i took to the mountain the snow caps um i'm just yeah, I used the paint and the same little piece of paper and just, you know, painted in essentially the tree. I just used a base color, went over it with like a lighter shade, and then I went back and added some black to the base color to add in some some shadow spots. So, again, I kind of enjoyed how that turned out. You know, you get like the texturing and stuff in there. I thought it turned out rather well. Usually I end up um, hand painting my trees in with, uh, with acrylic paint. But this one I wanted to try to stay as much, I pretty much kept the whole thing within spray paint just to show what's possible with spray paint art. And again though, I, I playing a lot with like bold, vibrant colors in this. Um, again, just to play around with it, uh, try out some ideas, but also representative of the bold colors and things used within the landscapes within the game itself. Which, um, I don't know, I hope to see more material released on it. Um, and uh, hopefully it's it's a worthy successor to the first game because it was a fantastic, fantastic game, a, a amazing time period, and definitely one of my favorites. Um, that there, I just stenc you know, put a stencil into the character. Usually, I'd want to go in and paint in some some details and stuff to get her to blend in better. I don't really like using just plain stencils, um, a black silhouette in a scene like that. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna wrap this. All right, guys, so that's a wrap for the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you excited for the game? Do you like Feudal Japan and things related to that subject matter? Do you think the controversy around it's even slightly warranted? Um, or you just here for the art, you like watching the art. You got the finished piece, came out nice. I like all the colors and stuff. It's definitely something I wanna play with more and dive more into the subject matter as the new stuff comes out. But uh, all right, I hope you liked the video. Any questions, please drop them down in the comments down below. I'm waiting on YouTube to update membership stuff. Um, definitely gonna get more, more into the video content as we roll into the fall and winter time. Uh, I don't have a lot of convention stuff lined up moving forward. So um, yeah, appreciate you sticking around and uh, have a great one.